So I had a request to show how do I create the um, the stream so that my rear world wheel blends relatively nicely to the um, the stream of the actual iRacing game. Now this will work for any game, but I use iRacing. And uh, essentially it's a combination of masks. So I have a camera above me, yeah, over my head that um, directly goes down and views the wheel. So it makes the wheel look a bit more vertical than it should perhaps, but that's the best I could do. And then I have the game capture, um, you know, showing the car. And then I try and blend the two by having a mask between the two of them. I've got a mask over the wheel and I've got a mask over the game so that the blend looks a bit more natural. And uh, so someone asked me, how do I do that? And uh, I'm sure there's lots of people doing this different ways. Um, but uh, this is how I do it. So let me bring in um, uh, a browser and show you the plugin that I use. You can do this one of two ways. You can either create a mask that uses the, date, the native mask capability within OBS, or you can use this plugin called Advanced Masks which I prefer because it allows you to control, you know, the size of the mass, how much feathering is on the edges, the shape, everything programmatically or not programmatically but with sliders um, versus if you use the native mask approach for OBS, you have to go use something like Photoshop, create a mask of white and black and do the blending yourself manually and hope you've got it the right size, the right shape, and then bring it in and put it in. OBS. I mean, it works, and that's what I used to do, but when I found this, this just made life easier. So it's at, uh, if, you, if you do a search on um, advanced, sorry, OBS advanced mask, you'll see this particular uh, link that'll take you here, and then you can just download it and install it. Advanced masks um, 1.1.0. And then when you load up your OBS, <laughs> when you go to add something here, you'll see, um, sorry, if I go to add a, uh, a filter, let's say I want to do a filter on this, you can see the advanced mask is what I'm using. So when you click plus, you'll see advanced mask as an option, as opposed to using image mask, which is the default one for iRacing. And that works, but you need to go create a mask like... Uh, where is it? I created. I created this in um, this game capture blend. It's, I made it for a two fifty six, uh, twenty five sixty by fourteen forty, which isn't what these monitors are. But I'll apply it anyway. But the white stuff in the mask shows up, and the black stuff doesn't show up. And you apply the mask, and it does a blend as well. So what is this blending? Well, let me first of all show you what everything looks like with. I'm going to turn that mask off. I'm going to delete it, the one I just added. I'm going to turn all the masks off, show what it looks like without that. So I've got a mask on the wheel. So I go into filters on the wheel, and I'm going to turn the mask off. So this is what it looks like when... I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see. So what this creates is a very um, stark, you know, line between, you know, the real world here and the world above, and I just thought that didn't look natural enough. So the first thing I do is, let me bring this back. You notice, by the way, that the taskbar goes away when I move it off screen far enough. Um, so bear with me as we go through this. So the uh, first thing I want to do is the wheel. So we're going to click on the filter for the wheel. Make that bigger so we can see. And I'm going to apply the mask. I'll show you how the mask is created in a second. But you can see what it does is it it basically follows a relatively close curve to my monitors. And I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And everything above that is blurred out. So then now that mask is applied. And you still get the, the stark aspect here. Um, but... You know, if I if I change the order of the wheel, I think if I put the wheel above the desktop, you would see that better. 
you'd see how now the wheel is kind of blending into the desktop, which is one way to do this. Um, you know, where the, where the, and what I did was I put the wheel above the desktop in my ordering and the stuff that's at the top gets overlaid over stuff that's at the bottom. But what I preferred was this approach. So in addition to the mask at the wheel, and I probably don't even need that, but I just do it anyway. Um, I added a mask to the desktop and we'll apply that mask. And so now this mask, I'll show you how to create this mask in a sec, but what it does is it now blends, let me just get rid of the box, it now blends the stream at the bottom, kind of has a feathering look to it, and it nicely blends into my wheel. So that gave a softer line as opposed to when there was no filters applied, you know, it was a very stark line, didn't look as natural. Okay, so let's talk about how I do these masks. So let's go back into the game, their desktop filter. And, and this works, by the way, with, um, I do game capture too, and that'll just show up in a second. And the game capture can look very natural as well. Obviously, in this case, the, you know, I need to work on getting rid of the showing of the bottom part of the monitor here, but this is another way to do it. But since I want to show you what I'm doing, I need to use the, um, not the game capture, I need to use the desktop because then you can see what's going on on my desktop. Okay, so in the filter, if you click on this filter, um, I'm using the a alpha mask and I'm using a shape. And the shape is just a simple rectangle, really easy. And uh, there's this thing called center Y and X. If you hit recenter, it'll center the, the mask over top of the uh, the source. So if, if I move it left or right, you can see it starts to be off center. But if I click recenter, it recenters it. So if you do happen to hit these these sliders, just hit recenter and recenter it. The thing you want to play with though is really the the width and the height. Um, so you got to find a width so that you're, you're seeing the whole picture. You got to find a height so that you're seeing enough of it. And you notice as I as I decrease the height, you can tell there's fading on the edges here. And the way you get that fading, let me move the height back to where it was, roughly about there. The way that you get the the feathering or the fading is this thing called feathering at the bottom. And there's inner, outer, there's middle. Um, I'm using the inner, and inner means that within the the source, which in this case is the desktop, I want it to f to feather within that. If you use outer, it'll fade outside of that. So because I want part of the desktop to be to be feathered or disappear, um, I use inner. Um, and if you if you look at this, if I decrease the size or increase the size, it brings in the feathering both in the bottom and the top. So, sorry, the bottom, the top, and the side. So the sides come in, the top comes in, and the bottom comes in. And so you find something that looks good, you know, and I found around 127 pixels for me was about the right answer. And then you can play around with, again with the width of the heights to make sure, like if you don't want to lose anything on the side, and you probably don't, then you make it the, the width a little big enough so you're only feathering the top and the bottom. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty much how this works. And then when I move this over to the side, you know, so you don't see the taskbar, so you, the, you obviously see, see the taskbar on the bottom here. If I move it off here so the taskbar disappears, it looks more natural. And then um, the, the more complicated um, advanced filter I did was on the wheel. So if we look at the, if I move the wheel above here, you can see how it's got a curve to it. So how did I do that? First of all, let me go back to the desktop and get rid of that filter so you, it's more pronounced. You know, I'm only doing the, only showing you the one filter here. Go back to the wheel and hit filters and advanced filter. So in this case, I'm using a regular polygon shape not a not a rectangle and the regular polygon shape um, allows you to specify a number of sides and I've got in this case 16 and I've got a corner radius of a lot 
thousand pixels. If I start decreasing the, the corner radius, you'll start to see, you know, the edges of the polygon here. And if I decrease from 16 down to less, like at eight, you'll see a more defined shape on the polygon. So I just went with, you know, roughly 16 and increased the corner radius to smooth out the edges. So it looks more like a circle. And that's how I got the curve. And then what I can do is play with the uh, uh, the center X and Y to move this up. So I, I don't want to necessarily see the, the screen in here. I think it's X. Is that right? No. So X moves it left and right. And Y moves it up and down. So this is what I mean. It's, it's so easy to now... Um, create this mass so it's just perfect for for your scenario versus trying to create a shape in Photoshop outside of this and make sure you know and have it hopefully line up perfectly with whatever you're trying to cover so that's how I do it and then uh, we'll move the the wheel below the desktop again and move this off and you can see what did I do wrong <laughs> oh yeah I forgot the desktop filter I turned that off um, let me just show you here. So I'm just going back into the desktop. In the desktop, I'm going to turn the filter back on. And now it's it's blended nicely. So the other approach I have um, is, again, is with Game Cacher. And it looks good, too. So I've seen. Um, and this one is using purely Game Capture. I, I can't show you anything in my OBS because I'm not capturing my desktop. But um, I prefer using game capture as, as opposed to using desktop capture. I'm just using desktop capture so I could show you what was going on with OBS on my desktop. And the reason why I use game capture is it's, uh, it, it's just less cumbersome on the, it doesn't use as much CPU. So it doesn't, I don't lose as many uh, frames. That's why I use game capture. All right, so hopefully that explains how this all works. Um, obviously, the alignment here is not right, by the way. I need to go in and uh, drag the wheel over a bit to make that work better. And then you notice you can see the kind of the yellow sticker at the top of my um, wheelbase. So I don't like that. Um, even when I turn on the dash, do you see it? Let's see. Yeah, it's still there. So I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is move the wheel up a bit so it blends a bit more into the dash so you, it gets hidden more. And you just play around with moving the whole wheel camera up or down. Um, and the other thing I do is I make the wheel camera a little bigger than just the width of the canvas. Uh, and let me, let me go back and show you what I mean. I'll go back to the other scene so I can show you my desktop. So if you go to the wheel cam, you can see here that the wheel cam, because of these stripe lines, is actually bigger than the canvas. And I do that to make the, the wheel feel proportionally sized to the inside of the car. So if I didn't do that, I think the wheel would look too small. So when I move this away, you can see what it looks like. Um, to me, that looks about the right size. Maybe, maybe, maybe I even want it a little bigger. I could, I could go in and drag and make the wheel camera bigger, recenter it, you know, something like that. So that's personal preference. Play around with it, do what you think's right, but that's how I do it. So hopefully this video helps and uh, have fun creating your videos. Let me know how they go and send me links. I'd like to see uh, what yours look like. Cheers.